This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, episode 48. People have gotten great deals. They go on these websites, they find a used machine. Um, I've seen machines that are $80,000 being sold for $30,000 used. This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, a show which answers one question from you, the listener, about CNC router tables, CNC software, hardware, web hosting, and business. I'll help you get started in your CNC hobby or business and help you cut through the confusion. Today's episode is sponsored by TheMakersGuide.com. The Maker's Guide. Useful tools for makers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the CNC Router Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Griggs, and I'm so glad you could join us today. There have been a lot of exciting and new developments uh, around the CNC Router Tips community. We've been doing a series on uh, getting started in small business using your CNC router table. And uh, we've also uh, had some interviews with some very interesting personalities in the CNC community. One of the things that... um, we will be discussing in a future episode, uh, we'll be setting up a web page and uh, how that's done. Uh, and, you know, look forward to that in the next episode. But today, today we have a special guest with us, someone who is instrumental in helping me to get uh, started and take my business to the next level. So I, I know you're going to enjoy that. Now, so far in this series on sm- starting a small business uh, using CNC, discussed commercial insurance with Bill Basher and uh, whether you have the need for that um, uh, to run your home-based business. Uh, We've also done a case study with uh, John Grismo where we've looked at um, how he built a massive uh, YouTube following around his CNC business, in his case, uh, doing knife making with metal. And in this uh, episode, we're going to talk uh, a bit about finance. And in future episodes, we're also going to talk about setting up a web page and using web web page creation software to do that. And we're also going to speak with uh, um, an attorney uh, about some of the legal considerations that you need. So there's a whole bunch of things coming your way about this aspect of it. And uh, we're releasing them in a rapid order just so that we can get the topic out there. So if you're thinking about starting a CNC-based business, there should be nothing to stand in your way from taking bold action. One of the aspects that comes up uh, quite a bit is how you're going to pay for your machine and, you know, what methods you're going to use to finance your machine uh, if that is the road that you're on. So when I decided that I was going to buy the Tormach milling machine, um, one of the things that I had to consider was how I would, pay for it? How would I, would I finance it? Would I go out and put out down a large down payment with cash um, to do it? Or, you know, would I try and pay for the entire thing? And uh, as I was looking around um, through the Tormach website, trying to pick out the machines that I wanted, uh, I noticed the, a page where they were discussing leasing. And I had never thought about leasing as, as an, a way to get into ownership of a, of a machine. To me, leasing was something you maybe did with cars or something that you did so that some of the larger businesses did, but I had never really considered it. And um, I was very fortunate because at the bottom of this page was a list of um, companies that Tormach had worked with, and one of them was North Star Leasing. And uh, they had a contact person there, Lucy Burke. And that is how I found Lucy Burke and how I met her, and I had a wonderful experience with her uh, through this process. She walked me through it, so answered several of my questions. It was it was fantastic, and so I thought I would ask Lucy on the show to talk to you about the leasing option and the experience, and you know what went into it. So I would like you to uh, get a chance to know Lucy Burke. How are you doing today, Lucy? I am great, Bill. Thank you so much for calling and asking. Um, other than the fact that I'm home in a beginning of a blizzard mm-hmm. up in Burlington, Vermont, 
Um, I'm very relaxed sitting on the couch. I'm not sitting at work at my computer, which I do quite often, and I uh, really love my job. So I'm kind of missing working um, today. Um, I work for a company called North Star Leasing. We have been leasing equipment for businesses for 38 years. Um, we enjoy doing it, and the reason that we do it is to help people grow their business. They may want to grow their business by buying bigger equipment. They may want to be starting out in business and buy a new machine to get going. But that's what we've been doing. And uh, I do it every day. I work with customers and vendors across the country and uh, help people uh, finance their, um, their machine, whatever machine they want to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done everything from floors to gutters to lighting to CNC machines, to air conditioners. I actually am known across the country as the artificial grass woman. Uh, every, <laughs> now there's a story we got to get into. Yeah. work and calls me the grass lady. <laughs> <laughs> because that has become a really big piece of equipment for doggy daycares and uh, schools, you know, daycares and schools and sporting facilities. So uh, we consider grass uh, a piece of equipment. That is just, so, I would never have guessed that uh, artificial grass would be <laughs> a big factor. That is uh, pretty interesting. I'll have to talk with you more on that one. So now, how how I met you it was, was kind of interesting because I, I finally sat down there and uh, I said, uh, let me make a call here and... Uh, I, I, I called you up and I said, hi, I'm thinking about getting a Tormach. And you said, oh, that's wonderful. Tormachs are wonderful machines. Uh, um, you know, we have a lot of people who've done those. And I said, but I don't know anything about leasing. Tell me about leasing. And you did. Well, the thing that people get confused about leasing is they think of a car lease, mm-hmm. where at the end of your lease, you, you turn the car or the machine over back to the manufacturer and the type of leasing that North Star does is leasing with a dollar buyout, which means you own the equipment at the end of the term of your lease. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's called a dollar buyout lease. We don't actually chase you around for that dollar. Um, <laughs> it's just a term that leasing companies use, dollar buyout. So um, our terms are usually one to five years. Uh, we can form fit any type of you, you can do a five month, you can do an 18 months, you can do anything, you can do seasonal. Mm-hmm. If you're only in business six months out of the year, you can do a seasonal lease as well. So, um, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. That boggles the mind, and I didn't know about that. Yeah, um, no, well, you didn't need a seasonal lease. No. You're not you're not on the coast of Maine and open only six months out of the year. So. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so um, let's say, for instance, the person is a, a lawn uh, care specialist and mm-hmm. they need a okay. big mower during, yep. during the, the summer seasons. They could lease a mower for six months or? They would be six months on and six months off. Now, there's no real savings. Mm-hmm. Because they're paying in six months, they're probably double what their payments would be if they paid for twelve months. Gotcha. Um, but they're only having to pay for those six months when they're, so while they're making money. Yeah, Got that's it. correct. Yeah. Yep. Huh. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's actually um, makes a lot of sense for for somebody who's like a construction worker or a mm-hmm. uh, you know um, um, a lobster boat captain. <laughs> A bubble gum shrimp. Uh, <laughs> and I have a lot of those. We're in New England, so we have a lot of Maine. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of accounts in Maine uh, on the coast in New Hampshire, you know, and they are only opened, uh, they may be open in the ski season or they may be open, you know, uh, on the coast in the summers, restaurants in the summer. So they like doing the, they like just paying for six months and then six months off and then they're back to paying. Another six months for what three or four years, however long mm-hmm. their term is. So okay. it works. It works for some people. Yeah, one of the one of the um, the first questions I had, well, actually, actually, it was more of a second question, but it, uh, about the leasing. Uh, when I was looking at the tarmac, you know, um, uh, just for the sake of our listeners, the the machine that I um, purchased was about a twenty 
four twenty five thousand um, dollar purchase. Okay, um, mm-hmm. and it's a milling machine system. It wasn't just your your vanilla, um, you know, bottom end of thing. This one was tooled up so that I could get into production right away. So to me, that was a huge investment, and uh, um, you know, I always considered like when you generally when you lease a car. Uh, most of the leases are on new cars, but they also do a lease for used cars. And I never thought for a second that you could lease a used machine. But uh, what was the result of that lease? We do we do lease. We do finance. I like to use the mm-hmm. word finance. Mm-hmm. We finance used equipment as well as new equipment. Um, we do a lot in the transportation industry. So we get a lot of uh, calls for used trucks used Mm -hmm. transportation new trucking is very expensive so people will go out and look for something you know that's used Mm -hmm. now when it comes to a truck we don't get that old i mean we we might go down to 2005 for a truck but um we've done a lot of cnc machines that are used machines Mm -hmm. people have gotten great deals they go on these websites they find a used machine oh and that's another thing if you find a machine through a, a private person instead of a company, we can work with that as well. Mm-hmm. We can also finance if you find your machine from a you know from a private individual. Um, I've seen machines that are eighty thousand dollars being sold for thirty thousand uh, used. Mm-hmm. So we can definitely finance that, and you'll save some money on that. Yeah, that and you know that blows my mind and i'm sure it's going to blow a few, some of the minds of the listeners because um i've seen all sorts of um used equipment particularly you know some uh milling machines and things like that coming from industry that you know they the company that owns them have you know outgrown that machine or you know their their needs moved or the contract that they were working on ended and mm-hmm. you know oh yes there's tons of there's yeah. lots of machines out there mm-hmm. and yep. you, you know and uh there have been some very nice values i mean i saw a has cnc uh milling machine for mm. eight thousand wow. dollars eight thousand dollars you can't even <gasps> buy the spindle for yeah. that yeah oh my gosh yeah. that's fabulous yeah but, you know um anyway that is is cool because it's a, another way for you know, people to make the move that might not have uh, the cash flow, or well, it's a bad choice of words. They might not have the the liquid cash to to put down. Well, that's just why leasing is yeah. That's why leasing works so well. Yeah, a lot of businesses starting out, businesses that are in the process, have been open for ten years. We save their cash flow. That's why people finance saves your cash flow. We also don't report to credit unions. I mean, credit bureaus, not mm-hmm. unions, credit bureaus, so that your financing with North Star doesn't show up on your credit report. So if you go to buy a house, it's not going to show that you owe $20,000 to North Star leasing. Mm-hmm. So that's another advantage um, to working with a equipment finance company mm-hmm. rather than a bank. Um, although I shouldn't say that because we are now working with several banks Mm-hmm. across the country for larger ticket items, people that have big companies, they've been around for a while, and they want to buy a machine that's, let's say, $80,000. We have some banks that can give us some good rates um, that we've been using mm-hmm. for some of the larger equipment that's out there. Now, um, tell me how you came into um, uh, being being a, a – uh, associated with this company you know what i I don't imagine when you were you know five years old and and playing with dolls or or whatever it was that you played with that you said you know when i grow up i'm going to be uh an agent at north star leasing (laughs) (laughs) absolutely not (laughs) i never had any interest in getting into financing um, I've always been in uh, the retail sector of, of business. I've worked for many, many, many manufacturers uh, as a salesperson, as a district manager. Um, I loved retailing. I wanted to be a buyer at Bloomingdale's, mm-hmm. um, all this kind of stuff. And it wasn't until you know I got a little older and I met a woman 
um, who, who told me she had this job and she had the most wonderful, wonderful boss in the whole world. And he was fabulous. And I said, wow. And she bragged about him. She bragged about how he gave so much to her, um, Mm -hmm. gave so much to everybody that was employed at this. And I said, well, I got to meet this guy. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I met this Dan Feeney, the president of North Star Leasing, who is he, he, truly, uh, and I'm not young, probably the best boss I've ever known and best boss I've ever had. Very smart, but extremely giving to his employees. And uh, so I, they had an opening and I decided to take the job. And it was a big learning curve. It took me two years to really learn all the difficult Oh, all the terminology, all the the funding requirements, all the paperwork, all the dot your T's and cross your I's. I said that backwards, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, anyway, now that I'm doing it, I really enjoy it. Fantastic. Um, it took a while to learn, but um, it's very interesting. There's never a dull moment How long at my been, job. How long have you been with the company? I've been with the company now seven years. Seven years, okay. So... Okay, and a typical day. What's what's going on uh, for oh. you there? <laughs> a typical day. I walk in. I usually get there by eight o'clock. No, I usually get there by seven thirty. Mm-hmm. I've got the computer on. I'm looking, reading all the emails, responding to my emails. I've got folders on my desk of all my customers that I'm working with to try to get them financing. Uh, applications are coming in mm-hmm. from customers. Um, I'm on my computer site where we put all of our applications once we get an application from a customer it's very simple it's one page Mm -hmm. asks a little bit about your business i call the customer i do a little interview i bring it over to the underwriter Mm -hmm. and the underwriter looks through everything and uh, either approves it or if it can't be approved in-house at north star we have syndicated partners that we can send it to to get other, you know, to get financing from another company. Um, so we usually get approvals within within 24 hours, usually within four hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and once that customer is approved, we tell them what their monthly rate is going to be for this piece of equipment, and uh, then we're then we're ready to go. We get a quote on the equipment from whoever they're buying it from. We draw up lease documents. Email them. We have e-docs now. We can email them, and you just click, click, click. Once you make your, um, once you send your lease documents back to us, I order the equipment, Mm -hmm. and then the company or the person takes over from there, and they uh, ship it to you. And your lease, you know, will begin either depending on if it's once it's delivered or if we have to do a pre-fund your lease might start right away. Gotcha. Um, I, um, I know in the case of, uh, you know, the machinery that I built, um, I wasn't um, responsible for, uh, for payment until almost a month after um, I already had the machine uh, because of the way it worked uh, out with, with the shipping and, and things like that from the machine. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm not sitting there paying a payment uh, for equipment I don't have yet. That's so, yes, yeah. that's true, and that's not the case with every single lease. Yeah. Reason being, Tormac gives us the option of sending them a purchase order, which means your lease doesn't start until your equipment is delivered. Um, they don't do that with all companies. They only do it with Northstar. Mm-hmm. Um, most companies now are getting more increasingly needing more money, needing more cash. So they're asking for cash up front. So mm-hmm. when you sign your lease papers, most companies are asking us to send them 100% up front before it even ships. And when we put out all that money up front on the equipment, uh, then we ask for the lease to begin right away. So that's called a prefund. If it's prefunded, then your lease would begin, you know, within the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um just because we're outlaying a lot of funds for that, you know, twenty five thousand dollars for that machine. So, what are what are the risks for the buyer of uh, of a lease? What are the risks? Um, I don't. I, I'm not really sure how to answer that. 
um, I don't believe that there are risks. Now, there are down payments. Mm -hmm. I mean, on a lease of, let's say, 36 months, you would pay your first and last two payments up front, and you would make 33 more payments to the dollar buyout. So I, I don't think that's a risk. I just think that that the customers have to keep that in mind mm -hmm. because sometimes they'll say to me, well, what if I put a down payment down with the company I'm buying the equipment from? I said, well, you can do that. You can finance less. But let me remind you, there is a little bit of a down payment um, to get your lease started as well. Yeah. So um, that I guess that's one risk. I don't know what other risks okay. they would have. You know, um, we're pretty easygoing company. If you have problems, you know, paying one month or something, we're not going to come after you with lawyers. You know, we're going to give you a chance mm -hmm. to pay your, your leasing bills. We're uh, a small company. We're in Vermont. We, um, we have a great collections department that call you up and work out, you know, some way that you can, uh, you know, you can make your payments. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And one of the considerations that um, the user of these – pieces of equipment should should have is you know are you generating or uh are you generating the the type of sales that would uh, would you know pay for this equipment already or mm -hmm. will this equipment assist you in getting to that level if you're already mm -hmm. you know you have a, a hot product or whatever that you're you're doing and you just don't have the capacity and this machine would then help you reach that capacity those are some of the things you got to consider Right. And our yeah. underwriters are really big on that. They want to know. That's why I do an interview with my customers. They want to make sure that this equipment is going to bring you it. If your monthly uh, lease payment is $200, they'd like to know that you're going to make $200 mm -hmm. um, or more a month. And most of the people, most of the customers that I talk to, you know, they're either already in business or they're starting a business. And they know pretty much how much this equipment is going to mean to them. Uh, Tormac users will come out and say, oh, my gosh, if I had this machine, I could save $600 a month. Mm -hmm. So um, that's usually the case. People are buying, customers are buying this equipment because they know they're going to save money or make money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and once they get this equipment, they're going to start, you know, bringing in the money mm -hmm. uh, right away. Yep. So and sometimes there's a delay. Um that's hard. That's when it's hard with the down payments. Because I had a customer who was buying a hundred and seventy thousand dollar machine. He was going to make seventy thousand dollars a month with this machine, but it wasn't going to start right away because mm -hmm. he had to get the machine, he had to build the customer, and then the customer had thirty days. So he had to come up with a little cash in between there for the down payment. So that's, I guess, that's the biggest risk is having enough money backing you so that you can get the machine, get it up and running, and start making money. It's not going to – it might not happen right away. Yeah. I, so you've got, you've got to have a little cash there too, the customer. I know I try and be as transparent as possible with my listeners about what it is that I'm um, doing and you know, how I'm uh, you know, generating um, income and you know, what, I, what I do with that. And one of the things that I did – in anticipation of you know owning the Tormac, uh, I actually stretched out the time before between when I first contacted you about um, leasing a machine and when I ordered one. <laughs> I, I actually stretched <laughs> that out a little bit, and the reason I did that was so that I could build up a, a cushion. And um, now I set up a fund that I had three three months worth of um, payments um, set aside. Excellent. Before yep. I even got started. Mm -hmm. So that if it took longer than I expected to assemble the machine or to, you know, get it in place and running or, you know, just anything, um, that I would still be in a position to, um, you know, to meet my obligations uh, as far as this went. And that's, that's been working out great so far. Um, that's so, excellent, Bill. Yeah. That, that's a very good, um, rule of thumb to have, um, I am recently working with a woman that's opening up a brand new restaurant, the riskiest business there is. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's waiting for a pizza oven to arrive from Italy. And it's taking two months. And she should have been open a month ago. And now, she, and her lease started because she did a pre fund. 
And now she's sitting there because she's not making money and she's paying all this money and nothing's coming in. And she's, she's in a, you know, she's a little nervous. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And a lot can happen between Italy and and, uh, here. (laughs) Well, it got to Italy. It went from, I think, Italy to Georgia. And then the warehouse in Georgia had a flood. Mm. So it was one thing after another. And I, and I, I, you know, I, I had her practically t- in tears on the phone, and I said, "This is what it's like starting a business." Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it, it, not everything goes as planned. Yeah. Um, she had a job; she has a full time job. Um, this was something she was doing on the side. So, I mean, I she still had money, you know, coming in from her regular job, but she was so she really thought that she could get this pizza oven get the restaurant open and get making money like you know within 30 days so, yeah 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 one one thing we entrepreneurs are is optimistic <laughs> <laughs> no, it, oh yes yeah. and i think we're all optimistic yeah, yeah. I, i'm i'm guilty of that myself um i received the machine at the end of december december 28th i believe was the day that it arrived and uh i fully expected to have that machine up in just a few days and, and running. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard they're really hard. There's a lot to put together. That's what I've heard. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I and boxes and boxes. Oh, just boxes and boxes for days. And, uh, oh. I, I kept my, my folks on my Facebook group, um, aware of it. Uh, you know, they, they were watching, I was doing nightly live broadcast to let them know how far along <laughs> I was. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, and I really felt a pressure crunch because um, some of my customers had pre-ordered the part that I make. And, you know, so they're waiting on their product. Mm. And, you know, I I felt really bad about the, the delay because it was it was almost a month before I was up and running because of a mm-hmm. series of unfortunate events, as they say. But um, it was almost a month before I was uh, up and running. But because I had taken the time to, you know, put out these uh, live broadcasts and things as I was getting the, sh- the shop together, you know, folks knew, yeah, Bill's working on it. It's, you know, not a problem. It, it's going to happen. And so, you know, now I'm all caught up on all my back orders and, uh, you know, we're shipping new product to, to people. So that is, that is really good. But it's about a month behind what I thought I would be. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's and, normal. Know. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, not too bad. But, no, you'll get up and you'll get going and you'll be, you know, doing just great. It just yeah. takes a while sometimes yeah. to get started. So, to get started in anything yeah. or to get a new machine or to get new products. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, now, if our listener is out there and they decide that they want to buy, oh, well, there's, let's say, a shop bot or a, a cam master. X3, really nice machine, by the way. Uh, <laughs> you know, and they have have no idea how would they, um, you know, what kind of process would they have to go through? What requirements would they need to meet? And whatever. So let's let's say it's a, a it's a twenty thousand dollar machine that they're mm-hmm. looking at. Um, okay. <laughs> so we have a website. You can go right on our website. And apply for uh, financing. Um, or you can give anybody at our office, North Star Leasing, a call. We'll send you a paper application that you can fill out. Um, you fill out the paper. Uh, you fill out the application. And we, to do in-house financing, we usually like a fairly good credit score. Um, mm-hmm. And that's 650 and above. Um, if it's lower than that, then we have other syndication uh, partners that will finance for a lower credit score. Um, their rates are going to be a little bit higher. Their monthly rates might be a little bit higher, but people don't object because people who have, who are struggling with financing, you know, expect to pay a little bit more Mm -hmm. and, uh, pretty much that's it. You know, once you get approved with us or approved with someone else, we can handle all the paperwork ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, um, now they've done their application for mm-hmm. for um, for the financing for this machine. Mm-hmm. And one one thing that I think we both um, uh, left out was that Is the rates. Was, <laughs> uh, no, no, not the rates. But we'll get to that. Oh, was we'll the, get to that? Yeah. yeah. 
was the um, purchase um, quote from mm-hmm. the machinery company to know mm-hmm. exactly how much we needed. Like in the case with, with the Tormach, um, I put everything in a shopping cart and I pushed their, you know, send a quote button. And mm-hmm. they sent me out a list of, you know, it's going to cost you this much, mm-hmm. okay. uh, which is something that I provided to you when I provided, when I um, applied for the lease so that you knew roughly um, almost to the dollar, actually, how much I would be um, uh, financing. Uh, so, you know, if you're, if you're looking at the shop bot or the cam master, you, you, you would go through, pick out all the features you want get it all laid out and get a quote from that company of how much it's going to cost. Um, for the deal. That's correct. Yeah. Yep, that's correct. If it's a person, a private sale, the person who's selling it to you can give you a, a what we call a bill of sale, mm-hmm. saying this is this is who I am and this is who I'm selling it to and this is what I'm charging you. And then we can use that. We need to have something firm. We need to know everything about the machine, everything about how much it costs, whether or not the vendor collects taxes, we need to know all that in order to do uh, legal lease documents. Mm-hmm. So we're pretty fussy about um, about, about our quotes yeah. on the machine. Um, but every single vendor we've ever worked with, they know that. Mm-hmm. They know that and they give us specifics. Tormac gives you five pages of specifics. <laughs> <laughs> Things you don't really need to know, but you know this part and that part and this part, but... Um, yeah, so we, we get the quotes, and it doesn't take that long. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. you'll get a manufacturer that's a little slow. Tormac is quick and easy. They're very fast. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned taxes a second ago. Um, yes, that's I, a tough subject. And, and something I couldn't talk about a year ago, but I pretty much know now what goes on with taxes. Well, you just uh, saved me a bundle, actually, uh, in in my Oh, um, right, case. yeah. Now, Today's episode is sponsored by The Maker's Guide, creator of the Triple Edge Finder. Get the edge you need, save time and frustration on your CNC project, and make setup a snap. Save time and material. Set up your workpiece on your CNC router table faster than ever. Accurately set your Z-axis height first time, every time. Automatically locate the corner or edge of a workpiece. Reset your starting point in the middle of a program. Quality crafted right here in the USA on U.S.-made CNC machines. Get the edge you need today. Go to www.themakersguide.com forward slash edge. The Maker's Guide. Useful tools for makers. You mentioned taxes a second ago. Um, Yes, that's a tough subject. And and something I couldn't talk about a year ago, but I pretty much know now what goes on with taxes. Well, you just uh, saved me a bundle, actually, uh, in in my oh, um, right. case. Oh, yeah. Now, um, since I am uh, uh, an authorized business in, in New York, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, I have a, a business entity for, for mm-hmm. um, my business, because I was buying a machine that was going to be used more than 50% of the time to manufacture a tangible item for sale. And I'm just going off memory on some of these terms. Uh, Consult a lawyer if you need one. Uh, This equipment may, and in this case did, um, be exempt from sales tax on its purchase. That's correct. Because of the type of, because you're making something, you're not just, you're not a retail store, you're, mm-hmm. or you're not a personal, you know, just a person to buy a Tormac machine for, for fun. You're actually selling things. You can go on your state website and find an ST4, in some states it's, it's another term, form, and you fill it out with your name and our name, and you send it in, and then that constitutes that you're tax exempt on this machine um you know otherwise there's taxes involved you know if you're if you're buying something that you're not making a product if you're buying a tub to wash uh dogs in for your grooming salon that would be taxed um depending on the state it's coming from depending on the state it's going to Mm -hmm. but most cnc machines 
you can um, you can come up with a tax exempt form from your state government. Yeah. Now, in the case of uh, New York State, I just was rifling through some papers here to find mm-hmm. it. Um, New York State, it is the ST one twenty one form oh, that okay. you use. Um, and in New Jersey, it's the ST one. Why don't they keep the same number everywhere? <laughs> I wish they would. <laughs> but you know, check with your with your state uh, tax department to find out if they have a similar um, form and a similar exemption uh, for you. Because you know, in the case of a of, of a twenty five thousand dollar purchase, that could be close fifteen hundred dollars or yeah, so, yeah. depending on where it's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you don't have to pay mm-hmm. right now, and you know, it's it's the little things that you know start adding up and you know being able to know about an exemption like that up front is you know it's a game changer so um and i didn't learn that you know i learned that from a customer from a tormac customer and we talked and talked and talked he found this form i took it to the office they said oh yeah that's fine and so now every time i get a new tormac or a new cnc uh, customer on the phone, I mentioned it to them, and they're all really surprised. They've never heard of such a thing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and it saves them. It saves a lot. You know, it saves big taxes. I mean, if your machine's going to New York State, what's that? Eight percent or nine yeah. percent? It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. it's a high end, mm-hmm. um, depending on where it's going. Yeah, um, and and there may even be some federal um, uh, programs that you can take advantage of. I know. Oh, that's true too of that i don't know about but yes yeah i know that there are i know that um there was a uh, program in place in 2016 where if you were buying um equipment um you know for for your for your business in some cases you were able to um deduct uh the entire value in one year versus depreciating it over several um but it was at whatever percentage that you know you were taxed at. It wasn't the entire. You know, if it was a hundred thousand dollar machine, you don't get to deduct a hundred thousand. You get to deduct whatever your taxable mm-hmm. portion would have been on a hundred thousand dollar machine. But um, mm-hmm. right, it, I'm not. You know, I'm not a yeah. tax attorney. Mm-hmm. But customer after customer after customer um, has told me that they they love to do leasing because of the tax uh, exempt. Um, because they can deduct a lot of their equipment mm-hmm. um, federally on their taxes. And, uh, you know, I'm, I shouldn't say that, although I know a lot of leasing companies do say that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something you just, you know, you talk to your tax accountant about. Yeah. And he can tell you, you know, how to um, make, you know, how to do your taxes every year, your federal taxes. Right. Now, neither of us. machines. Neither of us is an accountant or That's a right. lawyer. So if you we, need that kind we, of advice. You need to talk to someone who knows what they're talking about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So um, let's see. We've talked about how they apply. We've talked about, uh, you know, what types of things that they could apply for. Um, what are the rates like compared to, let's say, going to your credit union for a um, a, a uh, personal loan or a small business loan? Um, uh, rates are, 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 are good as far as leasing equipment goes. Um, they're not as good as a bank rate might be. Um, the problem is going to a bank is a very difficult procedure. Um, not only is it difficult, but chances are they won't finance business equipment a lot of banks don't Mm -hmm. um and that's why there are leasing companies now we don't have interest rates i mean we do have interest rates you are going to pay north star back some money we're not a bank so we're not legally allowed to quote rates Mm -hmm. uh we work with monthly rate factors um in other words the underwriter will give a rate factor like 0.036 or something and we take that rate and we multiply it times the cost of your equipment, and that gives you a monthly rate factor. Mm-hmm. Now you can take that rate, you can take that monthly, multiply it back out, and find out how much you're actually going to be paying for your equipment over the course of um, the term. Mm-hmm. So, and the longer your term, the more you're going to pay. Um, 
North Star Leasing has an outstanding program called our 13-month program. The 13-month program, people love it. You take the cost of your equipment, you divide that by 12. That is your monthly rate. You pay that for 13 months. That 13th month is your cost of doing the lease with North Star Leasing, and it's a very good rate. Mm. Um, So people like that. But they can go out 24, they can go out 30. I like 36. You go out 36, it's a nice, it's not as long as the 60 month. It's right in the middle. Your monthly payments aren't too bad. Um, With the Tormac, $25,000 Tormac machine, for 36 months, you're looking at maybe 700 a month. Um, You can take out a long term and you can call us up and pay it off sooner. And there's no penalty to do that. You can pay off your machine at any time you want. You may come into uh, a flood of money all of a sudden. After a couple of months, you call us up and we'll give you a pay a payoff figure that's going to save you some of that money you would have spent if you mm-hmm. had the machine longer. So that's another thing I didn't mention. You can do that. Pay it off sooner. Mm-hmm. And there's no, no penalties? No, uh, no penalties yeah. for paying off sooner. No. If you so if you if you're going to do it in the last six months of your lease, then you're probably not going to save that much. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you do it earlier, you'll save some. Yeah. So, you know, what what advice would you um, give people as as far as um, um, you know the decision to you know do I pay extra or do I you know pay something off early? Um, you know, ha- you've seen. Many people come through your through your your business. You know what what have you what have you um, what have you learned from from their experiences as far as you know the best paths forward. I don't know. If I've you can learned. Answer that. You know, I've learned to apply. Mm-hmm. It doesn't cost anything. It's a one page document. You apply. You find out what the underwriter wants to give you. Wants to you know how much your monthly is going to be, and then you know look at that and. Maybe you're applying somewhere else to a bank. See what the bank has to offer. Take your best, make your be- get your best deal. Mm-hmm. Um, look at and look at all of the um, options there are. You got to be very careful. Somebody might tell you your equipment is three hundred and fifty dollars a month, and someone might tell you it's four hundred. But you want to read all the print. You want to see if there is at, at at the end of the term of your lease, you may owe more. You, they, this company may come back and say. Okay, your 36 months is up. Now you have to pay three more months before the dollar buyout. So you want to make sure you read the lease contracts and make sure you're paying what you think you're paying. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I, I'm sure there are companies out there that aren't above board that y- there may be an issue with. I've heard that. That's mm-hmm. another, th- you know, hearsay. Um, so where were we? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> my advice is apply. Mm-hmm. And see what you and see what you're going to get for a monthly payment, and uh, go from there. Mm-hmm. And take the short. I would suggest taking a 36 or shorter month term if you can afford it. If you can't, go out to 60 months and then try to pay it off sooner. But I think I like the 36 month mm-hmm. um, because it's not you're not paying too much back, but you you've got some wiggle room there. You've got 36 months. You don't have to pay. You know, a thousand dollars a month for your equipment. Right now, yeah. um, when people are, are considering a, a major purchase like this, like a um, uh, you know a larger CNC machine, there's often a lot of accessories and things that can go along mm-hmm. with them. And mm-hmm. uh, I know many people's um, thought process is, well, I'll just get the bare minimum that I need, mm-hmm. and then buy mm-hmm. what extra I need later. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are pros and cons to that, I think. Yeah, yeah. But first of all, everything's included. You know, installation. I mean, you don't have installation with a Toramac machine mm-hmm. or a CNC machine. I shouldn't use, say Toramac all the time. But a CNC machine is no installation. But we cover everything in the lease, um, all your parts. Now, what you've just talked about is something that I go through every, pretty much every day or once a week. I have customers that have bought a Tormac machine, gotten all the parts, or they haven't gotten all the parts. They call, I call them up. I keep in contact. 
They say, oh, I want to get some more parts. Oh, I want to get a, a little bit bigger machine. Oh, I want to do this. So we start another lease. And uh, so we're able to help them again with a, with a second lease so they can upgrade their equipment or they can get more parts that they didn't get the first time. Mm-hmm. So uh, that would that would mean getting a you know a second lease mm-hmm. um, or second financing that they need for you know more parts. So you don't have to do everything all at once. You get what you think you need, and then um, down the road you'll you may find that you need more accessories. I don't know much about the machines. Um, the joke around our office is I don't know how to turn the thing on, <laughs> but I can help you finance it. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. You know, uh, in my case, there were um, there were a lot of options and accessories and things that mm. um, you know that I got with with the machine. But in each case, I had a specific purpose for them, and I knew that they were going to um, you know factor into the manufacturing that I already anticipated. Uh, but there were accessories I could have gotten in addition to it that um, you know. I chose not to be because that wasn't in, you know, my immediate plans. And I figure in in my case, and this was my thinking, I got this machine and I'm going to begin making it pay for itself and, and then some, and then, then I can decide what it is I need as the projects show up. So, you know, to me, uh, buying a fourth axis, for instance, you know, or or uh, or another machine, a lathe or something to go with this, um, I'll do that when I need that, not um, not right up front. But for me, getting the automatic tool changer and the power draw bar and things like that that make my life day to day easier. Yep, I'm getting them, and you know that's what that's what my thought process was. That's great. Yeah. 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 So. At any rate, I you know I hope we haven't beat the 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 uh, the horse to death here uh, for you, Lucy. But I, I think it's fascinating. I know that this was a subject that wasn't even on my radar before uh, before I found that page on on their website. And I know if I didn't know anything about leasing, that the vast majority of people did not either. So I really do appreciate you taking the time to you know. Oh, talk you're about so this. welcome. I'm so glad you um, had such a good experience. Mm-hmm. With North Star, we, you know, we kind of, another thing I didn't mention is we really pride ourselves on customer uh, service. Um, being a small company, you know, you can call us up, ask us questions, and we can, uh, you know, we can get you the answer either right away or within, you know, within 24 hours. And mm-hmm. yeah. um, that's what's nice about, you know, customer service in a small, small company. Uh, I know there are some companies out there that it's really hard to even talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, I I no. know I know you were you were always right there whenever I I had a question or uh, you know an email uh, or whatever. I always got a response from you. You made me feel very comfortable in in the process, and you explained you know every <laughs> little worry in detail because this was not a trivial thing for me. Uh, this was you know taking. Uh, a, a large leap of faith that what I was experiencing previous to this was going to continue. And, um, you know, that's, that's a major factor, you know, knowing when to, to bet on yourself and, um, mm-hmm. you know, you really yeah. helped me through this process. That's great. So, yeah. I, oh, I do thank you for giving that. me the opportunity to talk about leasing. <laughs> You're so Yeah. Welcome. And we'll be helping you with another piece of equipment soon. I'm, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah. That'll be fantastic. <laughs> As your business grows. Yeah. Now, if somebody would like to contact you mm-hmm. um um or anyone at, at North Star Leasing, how do they do that? They can they can email me at uh Lucy L U C Y at North Star Leasing dot com or you can call my office number, which is it is my direct line, eight oh two Eight six zero three five six eight. That's my uh, line. And if you know, if I'm not available, if I'm running around the office with my head cut off, you know, just leave me a message. I'll get back to you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, 
Okay, unless you're calling me today, then you, you then forget it. Yeah, because I'm not there. Yeah, nobody's working through the blizzard. <laughs> there are other people there that can answer the phone and help you. They're those brave souls that uh, made fun of me for wanting to stay home. So yeah, now, yeah. um, I I just want to point out to our listeners that I am in no way affiliated with North Star Leasing, other than as a happy customer, and uh, you know, I just think that the the job that they've done in my case in my personal story um was was fantastic and that's why i shared that with you and to help you learn a little bit more about leasing as an option so uh i hope that you all enjoyed this episode as much as i enjoyed um uh creating it with lucy and um i hope that you learned something if you've got any questions uh you know just Reach out to us. You can reach me uh, via uh, email at uh, Bill Griggs at themakersguide dot com, or you can reach me on Skype at Bill Griggs. And uh, Lucy has given you her contact information for North Star Leasing. Lucy at North Star Leasing dot com, um, and we'd be either one of us would be glad to help you. Yep. Thank you very much, Bill. Thanks for the opportunity. All you customers out there, I wish you well. If you need any help with anything, um, just give me a call. Be happy to help. Fantastic. Now, before we go, I'm going to ask you a question that I ask everybody, regardless of what it is that they do uh, on my show. So, imagine this. Everything that you try will succeed. Everything is possible. You can do whatever it is that you want. Everything in the world has aligned in such a way that whatever resources you need, whatever um, uh, things that you need to accomplish your goal are there. What would you work on next? Are you asking me that or is that a hypothetical question? I am asking (laughs) you that, yeah. Oh, me? What's what your passion? I, yeah, what would you work on? Oh my gosh, um, you, that, can't you know fail. I really haven't thought of that. I've been just going one day. If I, I, I you know, I don't know. Spending time with my kids and my grandkids, mm-hmm. and just in, enjoying myself. That's what you know. What I want to do when I retire. I don't really have any dreams of going anywhere. I love to read. I love to spend time with the kids. Um, go to all the sporting events and ballet classes and pretty much just um, doing what I'm doing now, except, uh, well, I just hope to work, you know, for the next five years, hopefully. Okay. I don't know. I don't really have any aspirations, I guess. Um, yeah, so you're, you're happy. I'm just happy, you doing. know, yeah, with, that's yeah, awesome. in my, in my own personal life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, don't really have any aspirations. Just learn as much as I can um, about the world and, you know, history. I love history. I love reading books on history. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, oh, I guess, you know, I've always had that passion inside me to write the best, no- write the best novel ever, right? Maybe that's... What genre? Um, I didn't think of that. Yeah, what, what <laughs> yeah. genre? Would I'd love you like? to write the best novel. Novel, yeah. mystery. What? What, are, yeah. what is your? I would, you know, fiction. Fiction, fiction book, um, mystery. I love mysteries and I love fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always trying to come up in my mind when I go to sleep at night or when I have some time, think of the best plot or something new and different, and uh, take notes. And there's always that someday I'm going to do that, but. So, yeah, I didn't think of that when you first asked. Yeah, see, that's but, why I give you yeah, a chance. Yeah, there you go. Think, you found it. I yeah. found it. It's hidden back in my mind. Well, I look um, forward to reading your book. I, I, I oh, hope you get okay. writing it soon. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it won't be a book on finance. I can tell you that. No. It would be a book, a mystery novel, something yeah. suspenseful. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah. Speaking of history, if you listen to podcasts, I mm-hmm. think you would enjoy Ben Franklin's World. Uh, it is uh, oh, okay. a, a podcast about some of the things that were going on in Ben Franklin's time. Oh, neat. And, that uh, sounds yeah. great. Uh, yeah. And it's not all just Ben. <laughs> it's the people Ben <laughs> would have been people around. around so. him. Yeah. So, the world around him. Yeah. So you, you might mm-hmm. want to check that out. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. We've been speaking. Thanks. With... Thanks, Bill. <laughs> so you're so welcome. We've been speaking with Lucy Burke uh, from North South Leasing, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Um, again, if you like this episode, please leave a comment, uh, or better still, leave us a rating and review on iTunes. All right. There will be information in the show notes for this episode, which would be at uh, cncroutertips.com slash 48. And they will give you instructions on how to leave a rating and review on iTunes. Or you can join our personal Facebook group at uh, facebook.com slash groups slash cncroutertips. Okay. And okay. Are- yeah, it's just difficult, but you know, we are working to get you know to give customers the best rates. We're going to banks and everybody else, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the the one question customers are going to ask. They're going to be concerned about their credit report and whether or not they get approved, and uh, that's probably the toughest part of the job. Yeah, I, and and I forgot to ask you if if um, somebody uh, applied um, mm-hmm. for for this. Um, it's you said it doesn't show up on their their credit report, so it's it's not going to show up whether they got it would show up as an inquiry. Okay, yes. just as an inquiry, but it won't show up as a you know as a debt mm-hmm. or as a um, <clears throat> what do they call those? I can't remember. revolving debt. It's not yeah. going to show up as a revolving debt. It's not going to show up individually, like you can see um, Capital One mm-hmm. or your or your uh, Harley Davidson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's not going to show up. I think there are some companies out there that it, I think Time Payment Corporation I think does show up on your credit report. Time Payment is a a great company that is extremely busy. Their mm-hmm. customer service is unbelievably difficult. Mm-hmm. They're in Massachusetts. They are busier than all get out, and the reason they are is they handle all the turndowns mm-hmm. that North Star and everybody else gives with people with bankruptcies, mm-hmm. people who you know have really low credit. They take on those burdens and they get them financing, and the rates are pretty high. Yeah, you know, twenty five thousand dollar machine is probably going to cost you forty five thousand dollars in the long run. Yeah. Oof. So, but you know what? You know, if, if you have a bankruptcy or if you have some issues like that, they take risks. Mm-hmm. They charge customers more because they're probably losing a lot of money. There's probably customers that are going bankrupt. Yeah, and. Um, so they charge more um, for those customers, you know, so yeah. they, they have a cushion. So that's why their rates are higher. Yeah. But. I mean, we covered, we covered all the upsides. We never, we never really talked about oh, any no, the downsides. Oh, no, I don't downsides. like to talk about yeah. the downsides. You know. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. that just upsets. That gets people all worried. I'm so glad we didn't get into all the, <laughs> you know, the peoples and the crowd. That's something we talk about personally with each customer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That and, makes sense. And, um. Yeah. So yeah, I I uh, I hope I hope I was able to make you feel comfortable on the interview. I felt fine. So, yeah, yeah, I felt still. fine. Although it's still snowing out there. Uh huh. Um, that, that hasn't yeah. stopped. Yeah. I, uh, and I'm I'm not looking forward to uh, to my one trip for the day, which is to the post office. To oh, mail out to people's the post product. office. Yeah. But. Mm. Um, <laughs> Oh, I didn't go to my mailbox last night. I better do that today. Yeah. All right, Bill. I got it. I'm going to go. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Send me an email about how to find, you know, if I can, uh, about your links, about your podcasts. Yeah. And uh, I'll get you a, a little um, um, email together. Thank you for with, the cookies. Oh, you're you're quite welcome. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> them. Yeah. They were good. Yeah, I. When I saw that website for that company, I was like, hmm, hmm. this looks like something I'd want to get. So uh, <laughs> They were good. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, you All have right. a great day. And uh, You have a great day. Thanks so much, Bill. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. I often mention many different types of software during the episodes and hardware and cutters and it can get a little confusing. So what I did was I put together a page on my website, cncroutertips.com slash 
resources. And on that page, I list all sorts of resources there from books to tools to uh, software, um, all the things that I use that make my CNC experience better and easier. And I hope you'll check it out. So again, it's cncroutertips.com slash resources. Now, if you'd like to have your question featured on the air, here's how. Need help? Ask me about your CNC router question on my podcast, the CNC Router Tips Podcast. I'll be glad to help or try and get you the help you need. I want this podcast to be a fun and personal experience for everyone and helpful. So let's keep it real and ask sensible questions. Please use common sense and show courtesy to everyone. That way everybody wins. Here are some guidelines to ensure that your question is qualified to be featured on the show. Please keep your questions under one minute in length. If it goes a little over that, that's fine, but um, don't ramble. If you have a website and URL, you're allowed to share it, but only once during the recording. Spammy or disrespectful or deeply private questions will not be considered for the podcast. If you need to ask more than one question, just make each question a separate voicemail. Okay, fantastic uh, talking to you again. I'm Bill Briggs uh, for CNC Router Tips. I hope you have a great day.